Welcome back to Restless. My name is Father Joseph Gill, a priest of the Diocese of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and you've joined my friends Patrick and Sarah as together we seek the face of Christ in the midst of today's crazy and mixed up world. And uh, this is Patrick and Sarah's second episode. They're not our usual co-hosts, in part because they're not yet 18. <laughs> <laughs> so we invited a couple of high school uh, students onto the show to talk about how you live your faith in high school, because we have a lot of people that listen. And uh, Sarah was sharing with me over the break that she listens to Restless. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you're you. welcome. Patrick will now start listening <laughs> to I Restless. I will very much start listening to Restless. He'll be a faithful listener, and this is how we get faithful listeners. We invite them on the show. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and, so I think it's uh, it's worthwhile to talk about because uh, some of us young adults remember our high school days. Mm -hmm. But my high school days were, uh, gosh, I graduated in 2001. I'm sorry to admit that in public. <laughs> That's really, wow. Yeah. And I was homeschooled for high school, actually, which so oh, really? I also had a unique experience there. Not too much peer pressure. <laughs> but um, so actually, let's talk about that because so you were homeschooled, but now you're at a Catholic school, Patrick, yes. and you have gone to public school your entire life. Yes. So what are the advantages to public school versus Catholic school in your faith journey? I mean, you obviously did really well in public school. Yes. And uh, well, I hope, thanks <laughs> to God um, and thanks to, to Father Joe and all the other people who've, who've stood by me and made me see that this was the truth, you know, and to follow the truth despite the opposition. But definitely one thing about public school is it's definitely helped strengthen my faith kind of in the opposition like, so I love working out and I love using resistance bands. And so the whole idea of resistance bands is that you build strength with resistance. And so I found the same thing with my faith is that the best way to really strengthen it is kind of by having it opposed, which mm. it definitely is in public school. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, and, you know, faith untested sort of isn't, you know, what it should be. I feel like faith, once it withstands the trials of life and all that opposition, it's really helps you grow and grow closer to what God wants you to be. So being in public school and have facing that opposition to my faith has definitely just made it like solidified it and strengthened it. But if I was in Catholic school, I would have loved like that theological background, you know, the knowledge to go along with that faith. So that's what I plan to do in college is get that knowledge to go along with my faith by studying theology. Awesome. So you, you don't have any regrets about not going to a Catholic school or? Well, sometimes I do. It <laughs> definitely gets really hard. And I'm like, it would be much easier if I was in Catholic school, if I was, you know, studying what I believe in and with people who believe the same as me. But if we look at Jesus's life, it wasn't, it wasn't all that easy. You know, mm. we're all called to carry our cross. And that's how Jesus, you know, he walked his path carrying that cross. And if we want to be like him, if we're striving to you know, match his faith, then we've got to go through what he went through. Yeah, that's certainly true. And and uh, when parents ask me, you know, what what should they do for their kids? I would always tell them just who's changing who. Right. You know, send your kid wherever you want, but be, pay attention to who's changing who. Yeah, definitely. You know, if your kid changes the environment, then great. Mm -hmm. You know, if they get stronger, great. But I think, I think it's winnowing, right? You're either going to choose one way or the other. You're going to either yeah. be all in with Christ or all in with the world yeah. when you're faced with those challenges. It's definitely hard for teenagers to to uh, step out of the realm of of uh, all of their all of maybe their friends, if you go to a school where a lot of people believe in one thing, and you've been raised another way, especially for teenagers, it's really hard to uh, mm -hmm. to s be steadfast. Can be, yeah. But uh, have you ever wanted to go to public school, Patrick? No, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Easy no, answer. no offense to those public schools, but. Um, I think advantages to a Catholic school are um, the knowledge that you get. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I take a lot of classes. In fact, Father Joe actually teaches one of my classes right now. He teaches dogmatic theology to me. He's getting extra credit for this. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's not really. <laughs> oh, come on. All right. <laughs> you don't need it. You're the smartest kid in the class. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, there's, there's a, uh, a lot of knowledge that can be learned about the faith. Uh, from a Catholic school that maybe you wouldn't be able to retain or only be able to retain on your own if you went to a school where they don't teach that kind of stuff. So I'm going to ask a question that I didn't put on this this our, our preview <laughs> sheet. Uh, so see if you can answer this flexibil flexibly. 
Flexibly? Is that a word? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Flexibly. <Not really short. laughs> I should probably know that. That feels like it should be a word. Flexibly. Anyway. I'm going to look that up. Hmm. Anyway, on your non-existent smartphone? Yeah, definitely. That's the one. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, where was, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas said that uh, human beings come to God in one of three ways, truth, beauty, or goodness. Mm -hmm. So which is the way that God ministers to you? And, and the reason I guess I was bringing that up is because when Patrick was talking about the classes that teach others about Christ, you know, I think that's, that's partly, probably the truth avenue that God can reach to others by knowing the faith. That's what makes you fall in love with him and, and with the faith. And, but what, is, what do you think your way is? Is it truth, beauty, or goodness? Like, do you, are you more drawn towards like the intellectual tradition of the church? Or are you more drawn to like the aesthetics, the, the music or the beauty of nature or beauty kind of elevates your soul? Or is it like goodness, like the witness of the saints or, you know, knowing good, holy people? I think definitely when I was younger, what drew me most strongly was that beauty. You know, I, I definitely like some of my favorite places to pray are while I'm surfing and I see the beautiful ocean or while I'm skiing and like oh, the yeah. glory of the na nature I'm in. I don't think any of you surfed too. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm learning, I'm learning so much about you <laughs> on this, this show. Yeah. <laughs> in the last episode we talked about her Instagram following. Yeah. <laughs> now she's <laughs> <for> surfing. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely started off being drawn by that beauty and just being like, how could you have such a beautiful creation without a crea creator? Mm -hmm. But then I feel like, especially throughout high school, I've been drawn more with truth. Just seeing that what we believe, it's just so true to me. It seems you know, inarguable. And it's just, and I don't have the theological background to give you facts to prove that. But to me, it just makes sense. And so that's really what's drawing me now. Hmm. Interesting how that could change. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Christianity just makes too much sense sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so you're more a truth guy? Well, yeah, I think so. But I do enjoy um, uh, seeing the beauty that God's created. Mm. I, I do like, like if I'm in like a big open field or something, sometimes I'll lie down in the middle of the field and sort of just take in all of the beauty that... Uh, that's just come for me, just from the peacefulness and the and the serenity of it all. Well, you're a musician too. I'm also a musician. Yes. So, what, what instruments do you play? Um, so I play the guitar, and I also play a bit of piano, and uh, more mainly, I play uh, the Irish tenor banjo as my main that's instrument. So cool. Uh, that's, a, that's an awesome instrument. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, more recently, on the banjo, I've been learning a lot of uh, old Catholic hymns and things that I can twang out in my spare time. Wow. Which um, I'm very <laughs> I'm very proud of. Um, so yeah, beauty is is something that you can see God very very well in, I think. If even like the stained glass windows or even going into like a really nice church mm -hmm. and you see all of the architecture and all of the, the arches and the curves and stuff, um, you kind of just have to you can't take it all in at once, you know? Yeah. It's really beautiful, and it really brings you to God. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a beauty guy mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. So do you have you ever written a, a song? I have. Nice. Yes, my friend and I actually have started a, a little band. Really? Um, That's great. What does he play? Uh, he plays the bass. Okay. And bass and banjo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll sound great. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, no, I... I uh, I have written a couple of not very good Christian songs, but uh, <laughs> I'm slowly getting better. Um, but you know, I don't know if a song has to be explicitly about Christ. Yeah, to be no, beautiful. Yeah. If you, um, it, whenever you listen to a song, um, and you f and you really listen to it, and you go, "Oh man, this song is really good. This song really got me. It's tugging at my heartstrings, and you know, it's really beautiful." God's in that song, and He's speaking to you through the song. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of uh, songs that I've listened to that have brought me. So, what are you listening? What's your what's your genre of listening? Ooh, I've got a really, a really wide uh, category. I, I listen to the radio a lot, so I'm taking in all of the new stuff. Mm. But um, if I'm picking the music, I go for oldies, mostly. Like um, 60s or like 80s. I rock. like Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. I like the One Beatles. Favorite, favorite mm. bands. <laughs> um, I like Tom Petty. Okay. Um. That's cool. I like 50s music, too. Ooh. So uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> that was the decade uh, Sarah wishes she was born in. <laughs> a little earlier, actually. Yeah. yeah, so you can enjoy it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. 
but yeah, no, that's really cool. Music is definitely something that can that can uh, bring because a lot of teenagers play music, so mm-hmm. that's definitely yeah. something that can bring you closer to Christ because it's fun too. Yeah, definitely. absolutely, absolutely. So speaking of beauty, uh, one of the topics that I get asked a lot as a priest, especially by teenagers, is you know when should I start dating? Mm. Mm. So I'd love your thoughts on that because I I've my first girlfriend was when I was in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. And looking back, I'm like, what in the world were my parents thinking? <laughs> like, I don't know. They were encouraging this. They were like, yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for it. And I'm like, what the? Now that I you know, look back. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Like, how, how should a Catholic teen approach dating? Should they do it in high school, middle school, never? Arranged marriages? I don't know. What, what are people doing these days? <laughs> well, I personally think that, like, high school is really a place to kind of develop yourself as an individual before you go away to college and you leave your parents and you're on your own. And when you're developing yourself as an individual, it's hard to then, you know, try to become something with somebody too in a relationship. Mm. And um, as Catholics, we believe that, you know, you don't just date to date, you date Mm. to discern marriage. And so being in middle school or being a young teen we're not all trying to get married or even discern marriage. And I just think, I think it does work out sometimes for people. I've heard stories, you know, of high school sweethearts and everything, or even middle school sweethearts, but I think that's very rare. And I want to focus right now on (laughs) friendships with people and becoming who God wants me to be before I try to sort of be myself with somebody else, you know? Yeah. That's a great. That's a great insight. I've never really thought about that. Yeah. No. Yeah. She brought up. Uh, Sarah brought up a great point that um, yeah, we date for marriage, and if you go to a normal high school and you say you want to get married, you know they're gonna be like, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> so if if you date to just like you know say that you have uh, a a love interest or something like that, then that's not exactly the right way to go about it. If you're a Catholic teen. Yeah. Um, that's what my eighth grade girlfriend was about. It's just really just saying to my friends, hey guys, I got a girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. That's, that was all it was. Just I think that's what it is for a lot of people now. Yeah. Or just there's so much pressure on teens. If you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you know, all your friends like, so how far did you get? Definitely. And you're like, uh, we talked. Well, we drove you to know? the end of the street. Exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> exactly. And it's like, and that pressure, obviously as Catholics, we believe there's, you know, certain, um, types of chastity should be observed with different phases of life. And it's hard with peer pressure as a teen to maintain that, you know, and not that it's, you know, less difficult as an adult, but once you've, you know, aged, I guess you could say, (laughs) you've seasoned yourself, (laughs) you've grown a little bit older, um, things start to fall into place. Like once you go to college, you've chosen what you want to study. It's you're away from home. You know, it's, these are big steps into becoming, an adult and obviously not everybody you date even as an adult you're going to marry and you shouldn't go into a relationship saying this is who I'm going to marry but you do want to be more sure of yourself and you can never be fully sure of yourself but you want to have a good foundation and just there's like I feel I really feel that dating is not something that everybody is meant to do as a teen yeah do you agree uh well I don't necessarily think that it's wrong yeah but i do know that probably 85 percent of them don't last mm-hmm. at all <laughs> and well in your in your because you're a sophomore in your yes. class how many people have a significant other um now remember this is a very good catholic school so it's probably skewed a little bit <laughs> it's differently than public school uh, i'm not hmm. maybe you don't know if there's an exact definition for a significant other, I'm not exactly sure what that is. But I do have, I do know people that are very close. <laughs> let's just say, uh, it's a good way to put no, it. They might not, you know, go out to drive-in movies together and you know that kind of thing. But there's definitely because they can't drive because exactly because they're, they're years old. But, <laughs> but you know, it, it it can be taken to an extent, and I don't think that that extent should be very high when you're in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I like being friends with a lot of guys. A yeah. lot of my friends are guys. And I like having sort of that freedom to get to know people and really become close friends and not have to worry about these are my friends and then this is my boyfriend. And at this age, you know, for me personally, and I think every person really is different. I don't think it's necessarily wrong. 
and that um, everybody isn't meant to do it, but you have to really take a look at yourself and your relationship with God, you know? So that's an interesting dynamic to have, you know, especially in high school, to have friends of the opposite gender. Like, you yeah. you have quite a few, right? I have. Uh, in fact, a lot of my friends are, are, are girls. Is Is there any, like, do you, I don't know, is there any, like, weirdness about them are they kind of like are they kind of like is she into me is he into me like, depends I, on the guy i would say oh really <laughs> sometimes i get a guy you know who who definitely is thinking about that and i'm not you know <laughs> but then i also have a lot of friends that i'm just so close with um especially because i do theater you know we're up on stage dancing together and things so it's more there's not really a question we're we're just comfortable with each other yeah but it, it again varies i definitely agree with you sarah um i do have a lot of friends that are girls um most of which i i feel very comfortable around and just like having them around not that i'm you know uh feel very attracted to them yeah it's not it's not hoping that there's going to be a a relationship blossoming out of this most of them are just really nice people that i uh that i that I like very much. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I think that's that's uh, the benefit of of what chastity allows us to do is to see the other person as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Right? As a, you're a person that I want to get to know. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how relationships should all start. I think exactly. it should start with friendship. Yeah. You know, instead of just diving into dating. Mm-hmm. So whether dating or like friendship, do you think that you should like as much as possible limit it to, especially more, more so dating, but like should you limit it just to, you know, good Catholics or... You know, what about others? Well, for dating, I would really want somebody who has the faith because then we'd really be in line with what we want out of the relationship. But for friends, I think it is important to have friends of all different backgrounds. Um, I have one of my really good friends. He's Muslim. And then I have other friends who are atheists. And it's not just like you're not just friends with them to try to convert them. I think that's the wrong way to go about it. Right. We used to call it missionary dating. Um, yeah. And I don't think I don't think that's good. But I think it's important to sort of gain perspective and just be open to to all good people. Yeah. Yeah. I love awesome. hearing uh the the views and beliefs of, of people that don't share my uh Catholic beliefs. Um just to see where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. And usually it's it's um it's very reasonable what they're believing. Mm, yeah. Um that's really true. And that, you know, leads to a lot of good friendships, even if you don't believe in the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Amen. So that's that's only one of the many stresses uh, in life is, you know, stre- uh, dating, the relationships, the, you know, the friendships. There's so many stresses. And I, I hear from a lot of teens that they're stressed out over mm-hmm. everything, right? <laughs> stressed out over school, stressed out over college, homework, sports, this, that, and the other thing. Do you personally feel, you know, during the school year that... That you're pretty stressed? So I, I've i always, my dad always calls it com- compartmentalism, um, where I'm always pretty good about kind of isolating when I'm, so I'm really in the moment. So as I'm doing my homework, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to finish this task and it's okay. And while I'm dancing, uh, I'm not worrying about school or homework or other things in life. But I do have to say, um, junior year, is, you know, everybody knows it as the hardest year. Absolutely the hardest year. Most intense year. Patrick, you have no idea. Yeah, get ready. Oh, (laughs) boy. And so I was like, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I'm always good at handling everything. And I was not so good at handling everything last year, you know? And Mm. it was, I definitely got really stressed, really overwhelmed, kind of like everything I do matters, you know, to get into college. It's defining the rest of my life. And I think the important thing there is to, Sometimes we get so zoomed in. It's like if you have a camera and you zoom in really close and everything's all blurry and fuzzy. And then when you zoom out and you really look at the whole situation, it helps that helps me ease my stress. When mm. I can look when I step back and I'm like, what can I control and what can't I control? You know, I can control how much I study, I can control how much effort I put into a paper, but I can't control, you know, what score I get on my SAT or what college I get into because there's so many factors that go into that. And so sort of identifying those things, I'm like, I can do my part. And then I'm really working on trusting God and just giving the rest to God and letting it go into his hands. Doesn't mean I'm not, I don't have days where I'm really stressed, but it definitely eases it when you put things sort of step back and put it into into perspective. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's awesome to be able to do that. And compartmentalizing sounds like a great gift. (laughs) I don't know that I have that gift. (laughs) Awesome. What about you, Patrick? Are you stressed? 
I do get stressed a lot. It's mostly because of the workload. Mm. Um, like you said, I'm worrying about junior year, how, how that's going to hit me. But um, <laughs> uh, what I do is if I'm stressed with something, I just kind of sit down and I push everything else out of the way. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to finish this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go take a break, do something, you know, play the piano for a bit or something like that. Mm. Then I'm going to come back and do the rest of it. Or if that's not an option, if it's like 11 o'clock at night and I can't <laughs> afford to take too many breaks. And no one wants to hear the piano playing. Exactly. No <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> Shut that off. No. Yeah, exactly. Um, but what I do then is I just, I just go to God and I say, you know, God, you're going to guide me through this. And with your help, I'm going to do this in no time. Mm-hmm. And that just makes me feel so much better. Awesome. Four hours later. <laughs> he goes to bed. <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> wow, that's. I mean, it is. I, I look back at at your what you guys are going through, and I'll tell you. Maybe being homeschooled was very different because I was usually finished my homework by like three in the afternoon. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead of what? One time. What time do you guys get to finish it? Definitely depends my procrastination that day. Oh, <laughs> that no. definitely makes me more stressed. But um, it's not. It's not too bad when I sit down and I really work. But when I have you know the activities start to pile up and everything gets like a little late. A little ten. Late. Ten, ten, yeah. I, I try not to work past ten. Sometimes I'll just, y- you know, sometimes I feel like I need to take that time to say, I'll figure this out. It'll it'll work out, you know, but I got to go to sleep or I'm not going to, you know, feel good tomorrow. Yeah. So, and then yeah. and you can't do that every night. You can't just put all your unfinished work away. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't work. But, you know, I definitely try to step back and ask God for help. And then it comes together in the end. It's always come together in the end. That's one thing that helps me is well, looking good. back. That's good. What subject stresses you both out the most? Probably math. I hate math. Really? What, yeah. what math are you in? <laughs> right now I'm in algebra two. Okay. And I haven't gotten that far into it yet, but um, I have been, <laughs> over the summer I did geometry uh, and Ooh. I didn't exactly finish it in the, uh, allotted three months that I was able to do it. So oh, no. now I'm doing kind of two maths at the same time. Ah. So that's that's kind of, um, that's stressing me out a little bit, but I know that I'll get it done eventually. Mm. And in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> I, I must admit that I've never used any math past about fourth grade math. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm not designing rocket ships. So, yeah. so I, mean, I guess yeah. you use trig when you're doing that, but like yeah. you become a priest, it's pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> Add, subtract, multiply, you're good to yeah. go. Yeah, that's true. Are you still taking math as a senior? No, I am wow. not. I worked out my schedule and it's all classes I like. So I'm hoping that will help <laughs> with the stress too. Nice. But I think that I actually, you know, managing stress is we don't always get to take classes we like. I had to take so many years of math and it was brutal. Yeah. But sort of finding the point in it, you know, saying, okay, I see how this helps with this or just offering it to God. I, say, I hate this, <laughs> but here you go. That might be all you can do is <laughs> yeah. the sanctifying nature of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, I mean, in, in, there's so many ways to cope and so many things to fit into our life because we've got yeah. the school and then we've got our extracurriculars. And are you guys doing any interesting extracurriculars this year? Not at the moment. Like, are you, are you still doing theater, Sarah? I'm doing theater, not so much this fall, but I'm, I'm doing debate. I'm on my debate team. Okay. Um, and I... And the photographer for my brother's football team. So that's excellent. Fun. That's where I'm going later today. Excellent. Your, <laughs> your brother's game. starting quarterback. He is playing a variety of positions. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Excellent. Yeah. Good for him. Nice. He's doing well. He's yeah. on varsity though, so it's exciting. <laughs> nice. That's good for exciting. him. Yeah. So so in all of that, like, how do you fit a prayer life? And and what would a good prayer life for a teenager look like on a day to day basis? Now, in the interest of full disclosure. Both Sarah and Patrick uh, did a little program with me this past Lent oh, called yes. Exodus 40. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Where it was, you know, you may have heard of the great Exodus 90 program, which is for for Catholic men, where it's like, yeah. you know, basically have no fun for 90 days <laughs> and cold showers. Like yeah. we, we did a little scaled down version, although some people did the, the cold showers. Did you do the cold showers? I did do the cold showers. Hardcore. Yeah. Was but I actually stuck with it. It's, it's really good for you, I've heard. It, it is. Um, it is. I'm still doing yeah. it too, actually. Yeah. And, you know, once you get in there, it doesn't really seem that cold anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. No. I mean, summertime's a lot easier than February. Also. Oh, I've yeah, been definitely. loving it in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like, on your day-to-day basis with all the homework and everything, what what does your, what is a good prayer life for a teen? So I think, like, 
if I look at my summer prayer life versus my school year prayer life in the summer, you know, I say my rosary, then I say the divine mercy chaplet at three o'clock. And then I have, you know, morning prayer, evening prayer, doing big, long novenas, things like that. And so going to adoration, but then in the school year, it's hard to find the time for that. Right. And so sometimes I get overwhelmed and I'm thinking I'm not doing enough. You know, I have no time, but I think the important thing is that you don't have to just sit down and read out a prayer, you know, that like the rosary, you, it's important to say the rosary, but you can also sort of make everything you do a prayer. Like mm. I pray before I do everything. When I drive to school in the morning, I sit in my car for 10 minutes before school starts and I just offer it to God, you know, and pray. And sometimes we don't even have that 10 minutes, um, in the morning. So, you know, I pray before a test. I keep my rosary in my pocket. I offer, you know, my workout to God, or I go for walks as a part of my workout and pray my rosary then. And so I feel like it's, we can offer everything we do to God and make that sort of a prayer if we don't just have the time to sit down. That's beautiful. Yeah. You know, I love St. Saint, Saint John Bosco who worked with youth his entire life. And he, he said he could only pray in what he called scraps of prayer, mm -hmm. five minutes here, two minutes there, you know, yeah. 30 yeah. seconds. It definitely, before I do anything, anything hard or even anything at all, that's even easy. I'm just like, God, this is for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it just makes it a whole lot more joyful. Amen. Definitely. Do you do a, a rosary every day? You said you're still um, in the cold showers. That's a good prayer time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to do a rosary every day. I've kind of fallen out of that habit. But um, I do see that a lot of teenagers fall into sort of a, a rushed prayer life. Like mm -hmm. you, they feel obligated to do it. And so they go, you know, our father, our Hail Mary, yeah. you know, yeah. and then, then they're done. Okay. I did it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, in fact, I, I had a friend a while ago, um, who told me that he said the our father so fast that he thought, uh, hallowed be thy name was Harold be thy name. No, really? So he thought God's <laughs> name was Harold for a long time. Oh my gosh. Um, so, uh, to avoid falling into that kind of thing, um, what I sometimes do is just sort of zone out and say the Our Father or the Hail Mary or any prayer you could think of, just really slowly sort of dissecting every single word of it, mm. kind of letting it soak in. Um, uh, it just helps to understand it a lot more, yeah. which is something that's really important. I mean, Christ gave that as the template of what prayer should be like. Exactly. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's not easy, but I think it's worth it So to have that, that prayer life for at least a few minutes a day. Mm -hmm. So as we have uh, only a couple of minutes left, what advice would you give to Catholic teens uh, that are listening to this? You know, advice in holiness, advice in striving for sanctity. I think the advice I found helpful, and actually I, I read this summer recently, um, and it sort of changed the way I looked at things, is that devotion starts sort of with discipline. And that you don't have to, like right away, you might not start with the desire to to pray each day, to give a few minutes to God and say the rosary or even just, just talk to him. But I think starting it out, just making it a habit, it eventually turns into desire. You know, once you start with the discipline of, okay, I'm going to give 10 minutes a day to God, or I'm going to say this prayer every morning when I wake up to God, it might start off as, this is hard. I don't really have time to do this. I don't really want to do this. But after a while, it becomes a part of your life and it becomes a part of your day that you need. That's what I found um, with praying and just remembering God in everything and that it doesn't, it's not just about mass on Sundays, but I like that devotion know. starts with discipline. Mm -hmm. That's really That's true. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to write yeah. that down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, What's your advice? Well, uh, as I'm not too far into my teenage uh, experience yet, um, I will definitely have more as I go along. But right now, mostly what's been helping me is, like I said before, just offering everything that you do mm -hmm. to God and just making everything that you do a prayer, like Sarah said, um, and just be joyful and make other people that are around you feel like that God is with them too. Beautiful. That's a great thought. That's a great thought because I think teens have an incredible ability to impact the lives of others. Definitely. Definitely. By being that presence of Christ in their school, in your yeah. family, in your neighborhoods, whatever it is. So if all, any teens listening to us, embrace your role. Your role <laughs> as sanctifiers of the world to become great saints, even in your young age. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Restless. You can find us on Veritas Catholic Network, 1350 AM and 103.5 FM, and also wherever you get your podcasts. 
So tune in next time to another episode of Restless.